bringing a little bit theory into what is mean aerodynamic chord in case you have forgotten this part from your principles of flight training. When we say mean aerodynamic chord, it is how we reference how the CD is positioned on a large aircraft. It is very common to use this type of referencing when you're talking about swept back wing design on a large aircraft. And this is what we have on our commercial aircraft. Let's break down the word mean aerodynamic chord. Chord is short for chord line. Aerodynamic is the aerodynamic capability of an airfoil, a wing, to generate lift. And mean means average. So this is the average lift producing capability of the cord line. A cord line is measured on any airfoil from the leading edge to the trailing edge of that airfoil. And the longer that cord line, the better that airfoil is at generating lift. Of course, the actual curvature and the thickness of the camber has a huge impact also. But if we only consider the cord, the longer the cord length, the more lift it generates. So why do we need to calculate the mean aerodynamic cord? Well, on a swept back wing, which is also tapered from root to tip, for example here, you can see how it's tapered, very long cord line here, and then it's tapered to become very, very narrow here at the wing tip. That cord length is not the same it depends now on where do I measure it. So if I want to know what is the aerodynamic properties of this wing, do I measure it here at the wing root? Do I measure it at midpoint? Do I measure it at the tip? Well, mean aerodynamic chord means where is the chord that has the average lift capability of this airfoil? And this was tested during the design stage and in wind tunnel testing. The engineers were able to find out where this airfoil generates its average lift and with that determine exactly where on that wing that average lift is generated. And if that is the case and it's right there, that becomes the mean aerodynamic cord. The cord line on that wing that produces the average lift. That is as simple as we can make it and as simple as we have to make it at this point. Then it's stated that the average cord, the mean aerodynamic cord here on this aircraft is 4.193 meters long from leading edge to trailing edge and the leading edge here is situated 16.31 meters aft of the aircraft's nose. Now I know that distance and I know the length of the cord. From your knowledge on how to calculate center of gravity positions, you should then be able to calculate the position of the CG at any given time. But you see, we don't calculate the center of gravity as a distance we reference it as a percentage. And we do so by knowing the length here of that mean aerodynamic cord line, and then always knowing that regardless of how long that cord line is, that Mach line is, leading edge Mach, the leading forward part of it is always 0%, and the aft is always 100%. So whether or not that Mach line is two meters long or eight meters long, it always represents 100%. The manufacturer has then established, again, through testing, mostly wind tunnel testing and calculations on the aircraft, have established what is the maximum forward and maximum aft Mach percentage that the CD must have at any given time. The center of gravity here is the downward force at which the aircraft pivots around. For longitudinal stability right here, we're talking about the aircraft pitching up and down. When the CD moves, it must always maintain inside the forward and aft limit. 
The forward and aft limits for any aircraft is not 0 and 100%. That's just a mag line. The forward limit might be between 24% and 50%. That is what we use the CG envelope for down here. And looking closer at the CG envelope, you're able to see on my example here, I have three CG envelopes superimposed on top of each other. I have color-coded them to make them easier to look at. The inner one is the green one. This is the center of gravity envelope limit for zero fuel weight. Then I have for takeoff and I have for landing blue and red. The lines, the inclined lines here on the left side represent the forward most position of the CG for that weight. And the right inclined lines right here represent the maximum percentage MAC for the aft. And so you can see here that my CG envelopes kind of go somewhere between 16% up to about 43-44% MAC. Not from 0 to 100%. This was a short video on a specific topic. If you want to see the full video or see the hundreds of videos we made available for professional content on aviation theory, head on to our e-learning academy at academy.mindspacex.com. And don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button to follow us. We're going to be putting out these videos regularly.